Okay, so I'm going to give you a close-up look on my new OBD1, OBD2 converter. This is made by Black Stealth. Um, I'm going, uh, I have a 92 Dodge Stealth that I'm going to apply it to today and try to install it. So I'll just let you know what you get in the package. Uh, you get this nice uh, housing which has the circuit board and the screw-on terminals. Um, and then uh, the in my case, I'm going to be using the output uh, or the input here is going to be a serial port from my old cable that I already had. This doesn't come with it unless you purchase it. So it's basically this plugs into your OBD1 port and then you plug that into the box. The box converts everything magically into OBD2, which is this plug right here. And this little item here is my Bluetooth dongle. So once I'm going to be done, I'll be able to have my diagnostics codes from OBD1 converted into a Bluetooth signal, and then I can convert that into my tablet. Um, the, the nice thing that this has, it has a lot more features than I'm probably going to use, but basically these screw-on terminals um, give you access to a lot more sensors. Um, so you can screw on additional sensors, uh, including uh, sensors for flex fuel, um, wideband O2, um, you, you can add your another oil pressure sensor, a boost pressure sensor, um, or optional sensors at the bottom that you can configure uh, custom. So. The other features, uh, there is an output, and I guess this goes into the displays that uh, Black Stealth has created for your dashboard. Not sure how all that works. I'll have to let somebody else do another video. Um, the other thing you get in the package is a nice power cable with plenty of cable to mount this wherever you'd like to. I'm going to attempt to mount this underneath my radio. Um, I might try it out first before I do that because I actually have two uh, 92 stealths that I'd like to try this on eventually. So that's all I got for now. Um, go on to the installation.
Okay, so now for testing, I decided to just go ahead and get an adapter for my uh, cigarette lighter. And then I attached that to the power side here. Uh, the other thing is I, I might want to use this on my other car, so I don't want to do a permanent install just yet. Okay, so the next step is to plug in your... Uh, ODB1 port. You see mine's hanging out here. A little clip edge broke. So I'm going to attach this in here. Just like that, I believe. Nice little snap there. And uh, so, honestly, I think I'm all powered up. I've got the OBD1 cable coming in here. I've got my Bluetooth adapter attached, and I have my power cable. That should be enough to get me started. About the Torque app and connecting to your Bluetooth dongle, is you need to go into your settings on your phone. Everybody's phone is going to be slightly different. Mine's a little outdated. Basically, you hit scan, and then uh, OBD2 will show up on the bottom. And then once OBD2 shows up, uh, you can hit pair and then it'll ask you for the password on your, uh, in my case, an Elm, uh, Elm 327 adapter. And the password was just 1234. Uh, after you get into that, um, and if any of that doesn't work, you need to turn off and turn on your Bluetooth. It's just like any other Bluetooth device. Um, and you can go into your Torque app. Of course, you need to have the power on and you need to have your keys installed. But you can see right here that the uh, adapter is uh, not constant. When it becomes constant, that's how you know it is connected. Uh, right now, mine's not connected because I don't have any power to the Bluetooth adapter. And uh, when you do have power to the Bluetooth, at least mine, uh, there's a nice little set of uh, LEDs that will flash to indicate power for you. So now I've got it running. You can see the uh, Bluetooth adapter is working. Uh, I've got my torque app going. We're around 1,000 RPMs. Um, so here's a little bit about the torque app. Let me let go of that so we don't shake so much. So you can look at the adapter settings. You can graph different things. Um, real-time information let's try that out so here you can see got throttle information speed obviously we're not going anywhere got the uh, rpms uh, boost is even showing up so that's kind of cool I'm sure I'm getting too much boost coolant temperature Clear engine faults, which apparently I don't have any. Now that I'm hooked up to the computer and I know it's working, I'm going to try to run my faults again. I mean, I'm hooked up to the car. fault code stored in ECU so I guess that's good uh, you can see my um, RPMs are now dropping down uh, see you can do uh, some line charts here I think a line charts fine maximum number of data points to record uh, that's fine x-axis sensor so. acceleration sensor which I'm not really moving so it's not too interesting CO2 
coolant. That's not too exciting. Engine RPMs. We could do that one. That would be fun. Got an ethanol fuel sensor. Looks like all the blue ones are, are lit up. I wonder... Hey, this is working. That's cool. How about fuel rate per minute? That looks interesting. Or per hour. See what that does. Fuel pressure. I don't, I think I gotta have a sensor hooked up for that. So, fuel remaining, fuel trim. This is interesting. I'll try that. See what happens. Click start logging button to capture the data. Well, if I knew where that was, that'd be great. I think I might have overstepped my... my knowledge limits here. error count that's interesting this should stay on zero if not then you potentially have a faulty adapter so I might be getting some odd stuff here going on I guess I get to go and learn more about it. Seems successful. I appreciate this uh, device. Thanks to Black Stealth for making all, all this happen. I'm sure, he puts in a lot of hours and uh, probably want to get one of these yourself. You like using uh, updated uh, software and adding gauges to your old Stealth.